Achieving zero emissions has long been a goal of the aviation industry, and it's been an elusive one at that. In the past decade alone, both Boeing and Airbus have unveiled concept aircraft designed to achieve carbon neutrality. But such concepts have been nothing but aspirational. They have yet to result in viable commercial products. But in September 2020, something interesting happened. Airbus unveiled a new zero emission concept, aptly named the Zero E. This program aims to use hydrogen fuels to power future aircraft. But unlike past concepts, Airbus has actually given a concrete timetable for its entry into service, 2035. Now, hydrogen fuels offer great promise for a potential zero emission future, but there are some really big obstacles that Airbus will still need to overcome. So will we actually see a hydrogen powered plane in 2035, or will this just be another failed concept? Let me explain. Before diving into the challenges that Airbus faces, let's first take a look at what the Zero E promises. Right now, the program consists of three distinct concept planes, all of which are powered by clean hydrogen fuel. First, we've got the Zero E Turbofan, a 120 to 200 seat aircraft that looks very similar to the Airbus A220 and sports a range of about 2,000 nautical miles. Next up, we've got the smaller Zero E Turboprop. It seats just 100 passengers and flies just 1,000 nautical miles, and it looks to replace the likes of the de Havilland Dash 8. Finally, we have the Zero E blended wing body, an aircraft whose wings and fuselage seamlessly merge for improved efficiency. It's the largest of the three concepts, seating just about 200 passengers and flying just about 2,000 nautical miles. Airbus believes that they can turn these concepts to reality by 2035, but they've only actually committed to building one of these three, and they're still trying to figure out which one is most viable. So which of the trio is most likely to actually make it into production? Well, I think we can rule out the blended wing body right off the bat. Both Boeing and Airbus have explored BWB concepts for years due to their potential fuel savings, but they suffer from aerodynamic deficiencies and they'd be more difficult to produce. What's more, its distinct cabin layout, where fewer people are close to windows and exits, could be met with resistance from regulators and passengers alike. Since Airbus's main objective is to solve hydrogen propulsion, this added complexity would likely distract from that goal. So that leaves us with the turbofan and turboprop concepts. And of the two, the turboprop seems more likely. First off, it's smaller. Given that hydrogen propulsion is brand spanking new for use on aircraft, it makes sense that Airbus would start small and scale up over time. In addition, the turboprop wouldn't cannibalize the sales of other Airbus aircraft, while the turbofan would. Airbus currently has a regional jet in its lineup that's comparable to the Zero E turbofan. That jet, the A220, is one of Airbus's newest and most technologically advanced aircraft. By going with the Zero E turbofan, Airbus would be risking overlap between the two programs, which could stunt the growth of both. But Airbus doesn't run that risk with the Zero E turboprop, since it doesn't have a sub 100 seat aircraft in its portfolio. So now that we've laid out the foundation of the Zero E program, why exactly is Airbus pursuing hydrogen propulsion? Well, the short answer is that hydrogen gas burns clean. Unlike the combustion of traditional kerosene, which emits soot and carbon dioxide, the byproduct of hydrogen fuel is just harmless water vapor. Building a series of aircraft that can run on hydrogen would ultimately help reduce aviation's fairly hefty carbon footprint. But hydrogen's benefits aren't just limited to its environmental impact. One of its greatest advantages is that it's incredibly energy dense. While traditional jet fuel has an energy density of 12,000 watt hours per kilo, hydrogen's energy density is 40,000 watt hours per kilo. That means that hydrogen gas has more than three times as much potential energy as kerosene. Not only is it incredibly energy dense, but it's also incredibly light. It is a gas after all, meaning it essentially weighs nothing. Consider for a second that a 787-9 can carry about 36,000 gallons of fuel, 
and jet fuel weighs about seven and a half pounds per gallon. That means that when a fully loaded 787 takes off, it's carrying 270,000 pounds in fuel alone. Swap all that heavy fuel out for hydrogen, and all of a sudden the plane is much lighter. This would allow the aircraft to use less fuel to reach its destination, in turn reducing costs for airlines and bringing down fare prices. Alternatively, light fuels could enable jets to massively increase their payload capacities, and could even make massive A380-sized planes viable once again. So all of this sounds great, but you read the title of this video and I bet you can guess where I'm going next. Despite all the potential benefits, there are some serious obstacles that need to be addressed before hydrogen aircraft become a reality. Yes, the development of the hydrogen propulsion systems will be difficult in of itself, but that's not what we're going to focus on here, since Airbus clearly believes it can be done. As a matter of fact, the first big obstacle that we'll cover isn't a technical limitation at all. Rather, it has to do with cost, specifically just how expensive hydrogen fuels are. Right now, the cost of jet fuel is pretty cheap, with it trading globally at just 27 cents per kilo. In comparison, hydrogen fuel costs over 50 times as much, at $16 per kilo. Now, the reason it's so expensive has to do with how it's made. The most common way of producing hydrogen gas is through a process known as electrolysis. Basically, this process leverages an electric current to break down water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen, from which the hydrogen can be isolated and stored. But the amount of electricity that's needed for this process is colossal, which drives up costs. If Airbus hopes to convince airlines to adopt hydrogen, they're going to need to figure out how to make this process cheaper. Luckily, they have 15 years to do so, and hydrogen production has already seen a dip in cost in recent years. But even if Airbus is able to solve this problem, one massive obstacle still looms large. Currently, no hydrogen distribution network exists, and building one up would be a logistical nightmare. One key reason that Tesla has been so successful in the electrical vehicle market is thanks to its charging network. There are thousands of Tesla chargers across the globe, and the cost of building new ones is fairly low because they just plug right into the existing electrical grid. As such, Tesla can build new chargers all over the place at a fairly low cost. This would not be the case for hydrogen-based jet fuel. Not only would airports have to install specialized hydrogen pumps, but they would also need to build an on-site electrolysis station or build pipelines to nearby hydrogen plants. This would be a massive capital investment, an investment that only the largest and most wealthy airports, such as London Heathrow, would be willing to make. The issue here is that the 100-seat 0E turboprop is best designed to fly from hubs to small airports. But those small airports are unlikely to have the resources or the will to build out complex hydrogen infrastructure. This would ultimately restrict Zero E's operations to a limited number of hubs that are fairly close together. These sorts of hubs tend to charge much more for landing and slot fees, and since smaller aircraft generate less revenue per flight, the Zero E turboprop will have a hard time turning a profit. Given these operating constraints, airlines might shy away from the Zero E altogether. And if Airbus is actually to move forward, they might have to rely on government intervention. The European Union still strives to limit global warming to 2 degrees Celsius by 2040, and it could reward those airlines and airports that are willing to adopt hydrogen technology. For instance, governments could subsidize landing and slot fees for airlines that fly hydrogen planes. What's more, they could offer grants to airports to build out hydrogen infrastructure. But this sort of intervention is not assured, and concerns over which countries will pay for what will almost certainly arise. So as cool as hydrogen planes may be, and as much promise as they may represent, their 2035 arrival is anything but guaranteed. Now the term zero E is only what Airbus is calling these early concepts. And if Airbus actually moves forward with one of these designs, they'll almost certainly give it a new name. What do you guys think they should call it? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you wanna join the Patreon community and help this channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.